Welcome back to another Fear Fishing Tip, Tricks, and Other Random Thoughts. We are in the studio today. A couple weeks ago, we did a video on how to find fish after post-spawn. Well, I'm happy to announce that I feel that in most lakes in Ontario, post-spawn is coming to an end. Those largemouth are starting to set up in shallow water. They're starting to move. They're starting to bite better. And the smallmouth, I'm not seeing as many of them cruising the shorelines, the sand, shallow as I was a couple weeks ago. So things are changing in Ontario, but things are changing, but they're changing for the better. Post-spawn is a tough time of year to catch fish, but after post-spawn, we're gonna go through a, a, a good cycle where fish are feeding and fish are looking for food. Let me give you the fishing 101 on where the bass are at. What's going on out there, where they're headed to, and how you can catch them. Welcome back to beautiful Lake Fear Fishing. We're gonna talk about how to find bass after the post-spawn is over. We talked about this in the last video. The post-spawn is when, you know, largemouth and smallmouth do their jam, and then they get into a bit of a pouty phase on how you have to, most largemouth head off to deep water and pout. That's all over with. The last couple outings, we've been, I've been seeing more and more fish shallow, especially largemouth, which is great news for you largemouth heads, because this is the time of year they bite. So after post spawn, we will use a red marker. All these largemouth that were hanging out here in this deep milfoil, not all of them I, I'm going to say, all these fish that were hanging out, there's basically two things they can do. You know, some of them are gonna go a little deeper and find milfoil beds in that eight to 15 foot range in most of the lakes I fish. The water's a little cooler, but they're going to school up. Most of them, if you find a great big milfoil bed, are going to be together on something inside that bed. Hard bottom is usually the case. And you'll pick out, you'll pick through and you'll catch little ones, but you'll find what they're sitting on. And that is what you've heard for years and years and years of the spot on the spot. Now the other half of the largemouth population in most lakes are just going to do the the exact opposite. They're going to drive crazy shallow. They're going to head from their post spawn areas to docks and spread out to feed. Some of them are going to head to lily pads and reeds. The important part is to know that it's never too shallow for a largemouth. You can catch a five pound largemouth in six inches of water and you can catch a largemouth this time of year in 16 feet of water. You want to look now for the best ambush spots for largemouth bass. They're going to be on the docks that have the most bluegill. They're going to be on weed beds that have bait fish. They're going to be in marshes that have bait fish, frogs. It's feeding season. The smallmouth bass, in my opinion, this is what they do. They head out to islands, to rock points. They're going to hang out here. But they, you, you're still going to see them really shallow. You'll see smallmouth push in and hang out on the edges of milfoil beds with rock. You're going to see smallmouth go to docks in the morning, sometimes midday in the, in the sun. So I like to find rock piles that are close to good feeding areas like docks or you know, rock piles that have sand flats close to them. And I, f I feel that lots of big small mouth just spend all their time going from, you know, home, the rock pile, into feet and then back home, and then in defeat. And I, lots of times, if I can't find them where I, I think they are shallow, they're on the rock pile. So this is an exciting time of year because fish are going to bite. Another tip that I can give you with the warming temperatures, the water's been over 80 degrees. You know, I've seen it dip down to 78, 79 in the mornings, but it's, for the most part, the things that you can look for to get more bites during, especially out of largemouth during these times, is current in rivers. Any flowing water will have more oxygen, getting the fish more excited, and if you can't can't find them there. Look in these areas in the thickest cover you can possibly find. Don't throw, I'm talking lily pad beds that you can't throw a frog across because they can't come through and that's when you want to get your big sticks out. So when the water's been extremely warm, my two go-tos are to find moving water and to find the heaviest pads. Docks with blown in mat in between them. Just the, the heavy, thickest, dirtiest cover that I can find. This works because Lake Fearfish is full of hogs and it's been working so far this year. So this is really your traditional kind year of bass fishing. This is when you know when you're in your head frog fishing, flipping docks, flipping trees, flipping mats, you know, smallmouth schooled up in deeper water. This is that time of year. This is when this is going down and, and you know like that traditional in your head catching bass in season. This is this is a great time of year if you've been on the fence about going out. This is the time to go. If you went out earlier in the year and had a hard time, don't fret it. Go to the spots that you were early in the year where you're used to catching bass and they are going to be there waiting for you. Remember, there's all kinds of exception to these rules, but in the most part, you're gonna find 
deeper fish schooled up, shallow fish. The bigger shallow fish are going to be in the best locations to ambush bait. Think of a giant, you know, five pound largemouth. is more like a guy sitting on the couch eating potato chips than he is a marathon runner. He got really big by exerting less energy to eat more food, which put him, you know, put the pounds on him. Small mouth, small mouth are notorious. The big, big ones for just being nomads roaming. So you, there will be fish shallow, sandbar still. It's where you're gonna find the hogs. The, the big ones in lots of lakes that have nomad smallmouth are the bigger ones. If you got any more questions, put them in the comments below. I'm happy to answer them. We can do more videos, but right now if you're fishing, this is what you wanna look for. Typical largemouth, typical smallmouth fishing, rock piles, weed beds, docks. The fruit is for the taking right now in our waters. Get out there, catch some fish. Remember, follow on Instagram at fear underscore fishing, and we'll see you soon.